I'm Tanmay and uh, with me Swapnil is here and uh, Professor Ravi uh, is also part of this grand potential solver. So this is uh, the similar grand potential model uh, we have also implemented uh, in open form. So first I will uh, show the mathematical models. I think uh, those things were already presented yesterday. So I'll just uh, briefly show this. And then I'll show some results and then we can continue to the hands on session. So, this is a grand potential model which uh, Professor Ravi uh, already uh, discussed yesterday. So, we are using a similar, we are using the similar model in uh, open form as well. Uh, so, here you can see the free energy, uh, total uh, free energy functionality. Actually, it is the grand potential functional. And uh, here uh, we have some terms like uh, anisotropy term, which uh, you saw yesterday, and then we have this uh, contribution uh, from the uh, grand potential, which is the driving force uh, for this uh, uh, change in phase. And also we have one additional term that is the third term, the FYI. So I'll show it what is the effect of it. So this is uh, one parameter to show the effect of the orientation field. So uh, just how different grains are uh, organized. So that is taken into account through this function. So uh, below I have shown all those uh, detailed uh, function, uh, functional forms of this. So I'll just uh, move on to this uh, uh, evolution equations, which we can obtain from the uh, grand potential functional uh, by uh, minimizing it. So we have different equations. So for example, the equation three uh, is shown here. This is the uh, phase field equation. So it gives you how the phase, uh, it describes how the phases are evolving and then we have this orientation uh, field equation theta. So I'll show you the results and then uh, you will be able to understand what is the effect of it. So we are, we are not describing this uh... Uh, all these equations in detail. If you want to know about it, uh, there are already papers published on it, and you can uh, reach out to us if you want to learn more. Uh, but considering the participants might not be from this background, so we are not going into the uh, details of the equations. So we'll just come to how to use each of these models. So let's uh, move on to some uh, results. Uh, obtained from this solver. So, uh, this is a multigrain uh, solidification which uh, we obtained uh, uh, by implementing that uh, orientation field model. So, here uh, this is for uh, aluminium zinc alloys, and uh, in the right side, we are showing the uh, phase orient uh, the uh, phase field uh, contour of this uh, alloy, and then in the uh, left, uh, in the right side, we are showing the uh, orientation of different fields. So uh, this kind of uh, simulations you can do using this uh, open form solver. And uh, but uh, in the hands-on session, probably uh, we are we won't be able to run it here. But you can uh, run it later. So if we do the casting simulation, then uh, we can uh, yeah we can do the casting simulation as well by uh, incorporating some uh, uh, heat exchange, uh, heat exchange, extraction term. So that is basically uh, the cooling rate uh, of the during casting. So that gives you uh, a temperature evolution, and uh, yeah, you can also get temperature rate evolution. So we can only do uniform rate of cooling in open foam currently. And uh, these are some uh, plots we can do. We can uh, compare it with the analytical uh, shell uh, function. And uh, there is this uh, blue curve is obtained from open form. So, yeah. Yes, yes, right, right, right. The cooling rate is changing, but we are keeping the heat extraction uh, same, uh, uniform throughout the domain. Heat extraction. So the so the heat is uh, getting uh, so the heat is leaving from the melt pool uh, to the ambient. So that is what uh, cooling the melt pool. See this left side curve. This shows this recalcitrance. So when you have a, any normal uh, 
typical solidification you'll have cooling and then some nucleation happens so uh, when the nucleation happens uh, there is a latent heat evolution because of which you'll see a slight rise in the temperature and then slowly falling of the temperature so we are extracting the heat at a constant rate and uh, we can also uh, do this kind of simulations for ternary alloys as well so here we have uh, three components uh, nickel aluminum and molybdenum uh, so currently the open foam only supports uh, binary and ternary alloys and, uh, we will see that uh, we have uh, multi phase uh, simulations as well uh, so uh, that works for maximum of four phases yeah these are the similar temperature evolution plots for nilmo now yeah we also have the uh, 3d multigrain solver so this follows a different uh, model uh, from the one which you used for the uh, 2d case so here we are using a, a separate uh, set of papers so we can uh, show the we can share the papers with you uh, if we if you uh, are interested then you can reach out to us so here actually we are considering uh, Three different angles, three different Euler angles. Unlike the uh, 2D phase where we have only uh, the planar Euler angle, but uh, we are not going to use the Euler angle directly in this formulation because uh, it has some disadvantages. So we are basically uh, converting them to uh, quaternions. So what are quaternions? Quaternions are basically uh, it is like equivalent to the four-dimensional vector. So we have terms this uh, q q0, q1, q2, and q3. So these are all there in the solvers, and uh, but uh, probably in the hands-on session we are not going to show it. If you are interested to run it, then you can uh, get back to us. We can help you. So the similar, uh, you can see the similar term that uh, a orientation. The last term got changed here. It is dependent on this uh, variant of quaternion, which we are considering for this. 3D case, unlike the 2D case, where we have only considered a planar Euler angle. So this this is the evolution equation of the quaternion, this uh, QI dot, and uh, yeah, we will have one Lagrangian since uh, there are uh, four terms. I mean, there's a constraint of the Lagrangian quaternion, and the summation of the quaternions is equal to the constraint of the Lagrangian. So because of that constraint, we have to use the Lagrangian. This, like I said, uh, it is equivalent to a 4D vector. So uh, it uh, represents a 4D sphere. So that's why, uh, uh, sorry, a 4D unit vector kind of thing. So these are the kind of results we can see uh, for the 3D uh, multigrain simulation. On the left side, you can see the phase evolution. So I'm not showing the uh, liquid phase here, only the solid phase uh, we can see. And by the way, this is a smaller domain, like uh, 250 cells in each of the directions. And also, we are using undercooling of 30 Kelvin. And uh, on the right side, you can see uh, the first component of the Euler angle, which which is absent for the 2D case. So in 2D case, we have only this uh, theta y that is the on the right side. In the slide is not transitional. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we have uh, two more Euler angle components for this uh, uh, 3D uh, multigrain simulation. And uh, this uh, open form solvers, these are also currently uh, capable of uh, simulating the precipitate growth problems. So uh, we have implemented uh, two phase, uh, three phase, as well as uh, four phase, but four phase is the maximum we can go uh, since uh, there are some limitation in open form in prescribing uh, equations as, uh, I mean, while keeping uh, vectors as the uh, variable. Like you cannot go uh, more than uh, three dimension, but here we have defined the equations independently. So uh, this is one uh, result we can see for the two phase precipitate growth simulation. It is for uh, nickel, aluminum, molybdenum. And the domain size is 1,000 cells in each direction. And we are using an undercooling of uh, 100 Kelvin. So uh, 
this uh, this is almost uh, the last step until which uh, uh, we have run it but you can run it further and see uh, further uh, uh, coarsening of this uh, uh, phases this secondary phases which this red is actually the uh, secondary fcc phase and the blue is the uh, one primary fcc phase so yesterday professor abhik showed the videos for this simulation yeah yeah, so, yeah i also have some movies so i can blue one is the matrix. yes blue one is the matrix red correct the, yes the red one is the precipitation <laughs> so uh, these are uh, some four phase uh, precipitate growth simulations so uh, on the left side we have uh, tetragonal uh, precipitate growth so what we are actually doing is uh, yeah so we have uh, different uh, strain components in the elasticity elastic field so we are just varying the strain field and then uh, on the right side you can see there is one hexagonal orthorhombic uh, sorry there is a typo uh, it should be hexagonal orthorhombic precipitate growth and uh, we are getting uh, it by changing the uh, eigen strain variable yeah i think that's all uh, and we can i can also show some movies of this simulations so you will be able to see uh, how it uh, grows <laughs> So this is the solidification of this ternary uh, NiLMO alloy. So this is how it grows over the time. Yeah, I think uh, we can also see this grain orientation. So here all this different colors represent different uh, crystallographic orientations of the grains. Yeah, nucleation and grain. Yes, yes. The grains are growing. I think. Uh, I think uh, we can also see a uh, very large simulation. I think Professor Ovik uh, showed it yesterday already. So this is a uh, 6,000 by 6,000 uh, cells. So this was done uh, using our Paramprahega cluster. No, those those were not precipitates. Those were, uh, that was just one phase uh, where the grains were in different orientation. We can go back to that. Situation. Here also, this is for growth. Yeah, yeah. This is the same. So here also, blue larger. color is the liquid uh, in the background that you see, and all these other different colors, small, small uh, squarish shapes that you see, those are all uh, solids of different orientations. I think some uh, 3D simulation also we can see. These are using a different solver. Uh, so, no, it's, it's grand potential plus orientation field. So, uh, the free energy functional that we use for the grand potential model, so we have made a slight modification in that. Yeah, so, so, uh, so usually what so to simulate different phases, uh, we'll use a multi-phase field model where you'll have, you'll have n number of phases to represent n number of grains that you can have in the system. So now the number of equations will increase because let's say you want to simulate 10 different orientations of grains. So you'll have to solve for 10 equations. So now this orientation field solves that problem by having one single parameter called as orientation field parameter. So we have only one single phase field parameter and then we have a orientation field parameter. So we just solve for those two equations. That's it. This picture is only possible. 
in this open form only. Yeah, now uh, we can see uh, one precipitated, uh, two phase precipitated growth simulation result. So, this is for actually NIL CR. So, uh, during this uh, hands on session, you will be interacted with the NIL uh, CR. Well, uh, files. Usually, uh, this is how uh, it will look if you run a large enough simulation. So, this is again the multi phase precipitated growth simulation. So through all this presentation and this videos, we wanted to show what all things can be simulated using the grand potential open form model. And uh, so if you want to simulate this kind of problems, you can use this particular model. And if you have any questions, you can uh, reach out to us. Uh, so this we have written on open form. So uh, for all those who don't know what open form is, open form is a C++ library package. It's open source. And initially it started uh, with the CFD people that they wanted to do computational fluid dynamics uh, simulations. So for that open form was developed, but then as Professor Abhi was saying yesterday, basically it's, it's just solving partial differential equations. So we have uh, written our partial differential equations. So phase field equations are also eventually partial differential equations. So we have written those equations and coded those equations in open form. So what we wanted to give were different tools and different softwares to approach the same problem depending on what you are comfortable with and what resources you have. So all the previous, so grand potential MPI solver, which you have been using until today first half. So that is discretized using finite difference method. Open form is based on finite volume method. There, all of those MPI, grand potential MPI solver, that's a explicit solver. And uh, here, this is uh, open form solvers are implicit solvers. So you can you can increase the time steps much further. So the time required per iteration would be more, but uh, the number of iterations that would require to reach to a particular uh, microstructure that will be less. I think we can. Uh... No, so uh, microsim because uh, so open form because it is using implicit solvers and we are solving equations. So at some point of time, it doesn't scale up as good as microsim solver. So microsim solver, we have been able to use it up to what 20,000 cores when simulations are shown yesterday, uh, but. Uh, open form doesn't scale that much. So depending on your domain size, it might scale to few hundred cores or maybe few thousand cores. No, we can add that, but we haven't done that.
I can share it with you. Teams make the sound. Yes, yes. yes. So I'll just uh, resume uh, resume from here. So where uh, Sopnil stopped. So you are able to understand this, right? Uh, just like Swamnil showed, uh, the cases directory where you have a different open form cases. This is inside this micro sieve, and then inside uh, grand potential open form. And also, uh, we have shared before this uh, workshop uh, folder. I think uh, it was from the website. So it is nsm.zip, which you were using. For the uh, for today morning's task and yesterday's task, so there uh, you can uh, see all these uh, different folders. So what we are going to do is uh, we will uh, go to the we'll we'll just open two different terminals for this. Uh, one of them for uh, this workshop uh, tasks directory and another one for this uh, microsim grand potential open form cases directories. Okay, so otherwise, yeah, yeah. Okay, the Windows people uh, may be having issues with uh, opening two different terminals. Then uh, I think alternatively, what we can do is we can just uh, keep this uh, GUI at one side and uh, the WSO terminal at, in the other side. Yeah. You can do that. It's okay. Yeah. So, So what we are going to do is we can uh, we are going to modify one one of these existing uh, case directories for today's uh, tasks. So the task uh, if we uh, if you go to this uh, page number two tasks for hands-on sessions open form solvers. So the first task is about uh, an NIL CR based alloy. So uh, but uh, as you can see uh, currently in the cases directory we don't have NIL CR. But we have uh, NIL MO, so that is similar. So what we are going to do is we can copy this uh, NIL MO, uh, just the single dendrite file. So like uh, Professor Avik was showing in the morning and also yesterday, the single dendrite solidification. So we are going to copy it and make it for uh, NIL CR. Okay. 
much. So, so yeah, so I missed one uh, R. So we need to do this for folders. Yeah, you can see that we have this dendrite NILCR now. Uh, this case directory we are going to modify for today's task. Yeah, yeah, yeah this copy. Uh, so just do this copy. So here you, we are using CP space minus R. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, okay, so okay, so I also made one mistake. So I think I'll just uh, do it again. Okay, I'll just uh, change the place for this. Yes, now you can see right. So, uh, in the right side, you have the task directory which you got from the website, uh, which was shared before, and uh, in the left side, you have this open form uh, cases directory. So what uh, I'm going to repeat what we are going to do. We can just uh, simply copy one of these <coughs> existing directories. Uh, some something similar like uh, dendrite uh, for the NIAL MO case. To create the uh, similar uh, case for NIAL CR. So, so here you copy could proceed to this stage. So here copy CP is copy minus R is means recursively. So if you want to copy just one file, you use you use copy that file name and then where you want to copy that file name and location. So we are copying from right side. No left side. So currently we are at the left side. We are left side, but we are copying to file right No 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 here itself. Yeah, you, you see this uh, CP command. So we are just uh, copying uh, one existing directory to create another one. So we are going to okay. modify that. See, there, there, is a, there is already a folder, dendrite, ni, an, mo, existing in this folder in the case okay. directory. Case directory. Uh, so, so we don't want to touch that directory. So that's why we are making a copy of that directory. And then minus r is recursively. So when you want to copy folders, you have to use this minus r flag. Because uh, we are going to run this task for NIL CR, not NIL MO. So if you uh, look at the task list, so yeah, if you have done it already, then uh, we can just go inside this newly created directory. Run, copy this. Can you raise your hand? Whoever is done. So if you are facing issue, just raise your hand. Back side. Okay. Okay. Uh, then we can uh, go to this uh, NIL CRT. Okay. So I'll just do it again. Yes. So, okay, if you have done it. Thank you. 
So most of you are done with this. So uh, just I'll move on to the next step. It was easy to open that. So you can see here that uh, there are uh, different directories like system, constant, and zero. So these are standard to open form. So in this zero directory, you have the uh, initial conditions in system. You won't be able to understand if you don't follow. In system, you have uh, different uh, uh, conditions about the time steps and the mesh size and what kind of uh, solver you are using, the tolerance and all those things, and also uh, whether you are doing parallel or serial simulation. In constant, you have material properties. So uh, we are going to uh, modify. Uh, uh, yeah, we also have this input file. So we are going to modify this input file, uh, which uh, to which uh, you were uh, shared before. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. So some of the parameters which are common between the other uh, microsim solvers, those are being taken from the input for input file. Uh, but OpenFOAM also needs some uh, separate parameters. So yes, yes, you can do that. Uh, so in that way, uh, so let's say uh, I can show you like. Uh, how See, this is zero file, used. system file, and constant folder. These are something standard which are required by the open form. In the zero folder, whatever variables you are going to write and you are solving for, so those variable files are present in the zeroth. So that is like zeroth time. So that initial data is required. You need to specify the boundary conditions and all in that particular folder. Then the system folder contains uh, the files which are related to. Uh, discretization scheme that you want to use and uh, and the time related so how frequently you want to write data uh, uh, what is the tolerance you want to give uh, for the convergence of the equations so those kind of stuff you specify there also the mesh scheme or the meshing is also specified in that folder so some of the keys that are required in each of these files so that we are directly putting through the in file Okay, so you don't have to edit in zero at time folder or constant folder or system folder. So the constant folder contains all the uh, thermophysical related properties are stored in that particular folder. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so you just have to edit the in file, input file that we have been doing for the uh, grand potential MPI solver also. Okay. So whatever other parameters are required in the zeroth folder, system folder, or the constant folder, they are passed through the in file. So you don't have to touch the other files, but they need to be there. Okay. Yeah. For some other cases, also, suppose I am taking zero as system, some files from there, from some cases. Ah. When I am making a new file, will make a Yes. So whatever changes, so there are some particular keys that we can change through the input file but there might be some more keys that can be changed if you directly go into the system files so but for general use you don't need to so all the changes that are required so that we have already given them in the input file okay so some advanced level stuff if you are trying to do something different from what is being done here then you might have to make changes there but for all of these base cases that we are doing, you don't have to do that. And whatever, uh, generally, whatever parameters are required, so that we are changing through the in file itself. Any other questions? Yeah. Then I think uh, we can move forward. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's. Uh, okay, so, or maybe we can uh, uh, set up the case directory, then after uh, T, we can uh, complete the simulation. Yeah.
So what do we have in this case directory? Let us have a look again. Uh, yeah, so we have this input. Uh, so it's not so we have this uh, input file, filling file, uh, which are uh, common with the NPI solvers. So this input file uh, and this filling file, these are common with the uh, my other microsim solvers like uh, the MPI solver you saw before. And the others are uh, just typical of open form, just like uh, Sovnil said, zero constant and system. And uh, also uh, uh, we want to mention one thing that in the constant directory, we have the TDB informations, which you saw before. So if we uh, go to this uh, constant directory, so here you can see this uh, uh, composition uh, CSV file, then HSN, Hessian files for liquid and these FCD files, these are all there. Uh, now what we can do is we can just uh, modify this directory according to this uh, task. So for that we can, uh, uh, I think it will be easy uh, to follow if we open two different terminals. Uh, else uh, we can also see it uh, using the GUI like this. <coughs> Sorry. So we will go to this uh, directory called NILCR first for the workshop directory. So, yeah, so these are the files we have. So we are going to substitute this uh, CSV files uh, for, from the TDB uh, into this uh, NILCR. In that NILCR directory, which we uh, created. So we can uh, simply uh, do a CP, then we can just use the path of this. I think uh, home workshop microsim for NILCR. Wherever you might have stored this uh, yesterday, whatever material was shared through nsm.zip so file, just follow. I have extracted that. So just navigate to that particular place. So, so just you have follow to the command I am typing so that you don't make any mistakes. So we are copying only the CSV files which contains the thermodynamic database uh, obtained uh, using standard. So here, instead of till the microsim uh, workshop underscore microsim underscore four, instead of that, you specify where your NSM folder is. So are you able to find this directory for this NILCR? Oh, I see. Can you see this? Yes. See, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what this means. CP is copy, then we are navigating to the location where the yesterday's shared files are. Okay. So, and then going to the folder NIALCR slash star means all the files which are uh, ending with .csv. Okay. All the files in that folder which are ending with .csv, we are copying them to the folder constant. Okay. 
So we are already in this particular location. Microsim grant potential, open cases, then drive, and I ALCR. So this is the case folder which we had created earlier. So we are copying into the constant folder. Yes, it will replace the existing. Ah, yes, yes, right. So right. this command will replace whatever existing .csv files are because we created a copy of ni uh, almo. Yeah, ni almo. That was the original directory. Then write ni almo. So the CSV files which were present, those are for ni almo. So we are replacing those files with ni alcr CSV files. Yes, yes, yes. yes. If you are finding trouble doing this, uh, you can also go via browser and then go to that particular folder and then just manually copy paste it like you do in Windows. Yeah, you can also do it in this way. So if you want to use UI, then you can just uh, copy from one of these directories to this another one. This is the constant, and this is the NILCR from this workshop directory you have. Just copy the CSV files and replace it like this. Any issues here? Any issues? Can you raise your hand if you have a problem? Copy the CSV files. Okay, so we'll go ahead then. Okay. Yeah, the next thing we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, modify this input file. So I think uh, Professor Avik was uh, showing uh, usage of nano in the morning. So yeah, we can uh, use that one. So uh, uh, on the left side, you can uh, see the uh, case we just created. So here, what are we? What we can do is uh, we will just uh, change this uh, delta x and other things. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so that it becomes uh, for uh, NIL CR from uh, since we are converting from NIL demo. And also, if you notice uh, the task one, uh, it is uh, for the time of 20,000. So, uh, yeah, you can use even uh, your notepad also. If you have notepad, you can use that as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, uh, I mean, so you can directly open this file also instead of doing it from here. Yeah, uh, if uh, terminal is a trouble for you, then we can also continue uh, from uh, just using some text. Oh, yeah. 
So this is your usual text editor. If you have Notepad or Ubuntu users, may have something like this. Uh, For Ubuntu, you can use gedit. Yeah. So this is what we are going to do. Is uh, we will just uh, modify yeah, this. Nano yeah, yeah. Nano, Nano also you can use if you are comfortable yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. Gedit you can use whatever you are comfortable with. So we are going to modify all this. So only uh, these two parameters, uh, these four parameters for now, delta x, delta y, delta z, and delta t. And yeah, also we can, uh, according to the task one, we can uh, make the end time steps to 20,000. Any questions here? See, we just need to make a uh, few changes, just delta x, delta y, delta z, delta t, and n time steps. Any problem? Ankush? Ankush is helping Okay, so we'll go ahead then. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So we have that molybdenum uh, existing case directory. So we are creating it for Chromium. Yeah, yeah. So we just need to replace the material properties, which are basically the thermodynamic database files, the CSV files. Yeah, and yeah, we need to uh, modify this delta as well. This is actually fine. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, to avoid confusion, I'm just modifying with uh, these components with. Uh, sorry. Yeah, just, but this is not really required, but I'm just trying to avoid confusion. Yeah, and the next thing we need to modify is uh, the temperature because. Uh, <laughs> You will have different liquidus temperature and uh, under cooling for different materials. Since we are uh, converting from NIL MO to NIL CR. So this. Parameter T, you can change it to 1680. Because earlier, see, we are, we are supposed to do all of this editing because initially we had a case folder, uh, dendrite NIALMO. Okay, so it had all the properties related to NIALMO. But now we want to change it to chromium. So now the that alloy chromium uh, nickel aluminium chromium alloy will have a different melting point. So we have to change the melting point. Then because we have already tested the system, so we know what delta x, delta t, those things were. So uh, we are asking you to enter those stuff. Yeah. Right, right. So this uh, equilibrium temperature and filling temperature, uh, this also we will change. So let's uh, change it to uh, 1682 and 1680 respectively. And also, yeah, don't forget to save that file. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So in between, I just uh, change the NI uh, MOAL, I think, just to avoid confusion. That is not really important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th those are uh, we are not using for open form because we are using function X4. So function X4 uh, doesn't really need all these things for open form. We are directly reading from the CSV file. 
so what we are doing is so if you remember that you installed some lib gsl right uh, in between after installing open form so we are uh, using that lib gsl we are interpolating the temperature from that csv file so by interpolating uh, so for first we are interpolating cn in uh, any temperature in between yeah. Yes. Yes. For other uh, function type, you will need it. But in open form, we have only function F4, so uh, we don't need to worry about this. Right no. 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 In open form, it is not there. But yeah, you can use the F1 if you want. But dot CD file, uh, it will not work. Yeah, so I'll just repeat uh, what are the changes uh, uh, I made. So this you have done, right? Equilibrium temperature and filling temperature. So what are what are the values for you? So you just have to change it to these values. Okay. And then uh, so before that, uh, we also change uh, this one. And and yeah, so we began by changing this, and yeah, so we changed uh, this. And did X, Y, Z, and yeah, by the way, uh, this safety also uh, you can. You can reduce it to 100 probably. Uh, so you will see that uh, that's more difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if this much is done, then we can uh, continue to run the simulation. So we have set up the case directory. Uh, I think uh, after a tea break. Yeah. We will keep running. Time step, uh, you can see this delta t, right? So this is the time step. Huh? Nano. Control X. Control X. Control X, then yes, you, you have to use it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we are waiting for D now. Uh, after this, so once this gets set up, so if you have any questions, you can post in the chat or you can get back to us. Uh, what all modifications are required in this file?
So, we are starting the sessions. Yeah, so, uh, so if you uh, have noticed that, uh, okay, I forgot to mention that there is another parameter which needs to be changed. This is uh, epsilon in the input file. So I think currently it is uh, 12 and you need to change it to 6. Yeah, yeah. So this is the value currently. Six. So yes. So if all of you are done, then we can start uh, one simulation. Sorry? Uh, I, I cannot hear you. Oh, I can come. So yeah, if, if you have made the changes, then uh, you can just save this file and we can go ahead to run the simulation. Uh, okay, so right now we are at this case directory, and yeah, like I was showing earlier, so we have uh, these things, and uh, what we can do is we can uh, go to this all run file. So are you able to do this? So in this all run, we have uh, all the processes which requires to run open form cases. So whatever changes we have made, uh, it will be incorporated once we run the simulation using all run. So you have, uh, you are ready?
so if you are ready then uh, we can proceed so you can see this uh, okay i'll just quickly do one thing So it seems that uh, I have specified four here. So just need to reduce it, and so there is not enough processor. But you may not need to do that change. So I'll just run it again. So this block mesh process creates your mesh from the geometry. And this, uh, so the geometry already was specified in the input file, and the filling temperature and equilibrium temperature we have changed in the uh, input file. So you can see that we have uh, two Kelvin of undercooling, so which is uh, our task number one. And uh, here we are using function F4, and we are going to run it till the time of 20,000. Okay, who are getting GSL errors? Only you? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. So, what is your problem? Are you, are you facing the same problem? Okay, then you can just that is easy. That's
You can just open another terminal, maybe, then you can see that how much it has run. Thank you. 
there is a difference of okay we see f2 which is p5 value okay f2 copy the nil cr dot psp file into the constant folder if you copy it from the nil demo the multiplication rate that you have is quite the difference so if you have changed the if file directly you will have another problem okay so you have to use the composition that is the a1 dot psp dot nil cr Whether it starts from 15 AD and goes for some uh, okay. So, for example, here we have one problem. So, I think find out.
So yeah, you can uh, stop it. If you think it has printed a lot.
So you can open uh, and see the results using ParaView. Just open another terminal, or you may, you may as well uh, cancel this uh, using Control C. So maybe I'll just uh, do Control C and cancel the simulation, and we can see uh, how far it has been written. And then. Can use ParaView to visualize it. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, after you have opened ParaView, you need to select decomposed case. Yes. Uh, uh, using the 
elasticity change this uh, dme to 0.03 in the input file so uh, next thing we can do is we can also change the undercooling uh, we can just increase the undercooling uh, so currently it is 2 kelvin uh, we can move, uh, increase it to let's say 3 kelvin We can change it to 1679. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, one degree. So, one degree covered with the last change in terms of energy. Okay. So, actually, if you look at real last change. The actual understanding has been brought front to shift in one minute. All of you have done this? Some of you? Okay, if you have done this, raise so your hand. Repeat the same workflow, run the do all things, and then all run. Yes, uh, we can just move it, move to the terminal and. Uh, 
do all clean. So this will uh, clean up whatever you have done. So that you can start a fresh simulation using those changes. So presently in the code you have uh, cubic analysis. You can do all clean and then all run. Uh, once it finishes, you view the folder in the same way that you did before using parameter. So anybody who opens a new terminal in Windows, please do source tilde back before you know the OS of 20 Otherwise, it's not here. Everybody able to run? Run? So use the same software view just after completing the module.
We have a plan. Okay, so we have to end the session here because five o'clock there is a So since we have all your we will uh you that you are able to install and run the microphone for them. Uh any doubts, please actually log on.